G'day everyone, you are watching the Sydney City Space Slugs coming to you live with the final of the T TTS uh, Shatterpoint League, the first league that we've uh, ever done. Uh, and we've got uh, a fantastic match in store for you all. Um, up today, we've got Morgan and Kevin. Kevin, of course, was in our last week's stream and Morgan a few days before that. And we've got some really, really, really exciting rosters to show you today as well. So I can't wait to get started. Um, and yeah, let me just give a bit of a background on the game today. So it is the finals. Um, both players were actually what we call list locked uh, in their final premier um, sort of squadrons. Uh, so both we, we both basically knew exactly what each player was going to play going into the match. Um, and of course, um, both players have agreed to do a 90 minute round today. So 45 minutes on the timer each. So that's going to be a very, very interesting view. It's going to be a lightning fast round. And of course, a bit of a gentleman's agreement in terms of no take backs and uh, all that sort of good stuff uh, you would expect to see in the finals. Um, so let's jump into the rosters. We'll start with Morgan. Um, both players, as I said, have some really, really cool rosters going on. So Morgan's um, sort of list building uh, theory has always been uh, take Vader, Django and Arfs, and then build every other strike team or every other squad around that combination. So we've seen Vader, Django and Arfs used quite frequently in Morgan's um, games. Of course, we saw... Um, uh, we saw Darth Vader with his uh, double advance, um, his um, team-wide identity that allows everyone to get a little bit more powerful in combat at the cost of some damage. Django as an absolutely phenomenal control piece. Uh, he can stop people's activations. Um, he can pull people off of objectives, etc. And he's got a few jumps to boot. The AF Troopers with their um, coordinated fire expose on Galactic Republic units. So that's basically just supporting Barris, Offy, and Darth Vader in this roster. And then today we've got some really cool Barris, Offy play uh, with Count Dooku and Magnegard. So we do have an eight force roster, which is very exciting to see. Uh, very exciting to see indeed. And so of course, uh, Jan Django Fett and Barris, Offy and Vader, of course, if they get wounded, then they'll trigger Darth uh, Darth Tyrannus or Count Dooku's ability called Brave but Foolish. So that's going to allow even more force regeneration um, and some Separatist Alliance supporting units doing some dashing or attacking. So that's going to um, basically come in clutch really nicely with the Magna Guard here. And Barris Offi is uh, a bit of a um, an Asajj light. She has a force push. She can get around the map really quickly um, and she can also buff up um, Actually, she can't buff up in this roster because no one is a Jedi. But yeah, force push, force speed, Magna Gar get in, in, in the way of some fragile primaries and secondaries. Um, Dooku and Darth Vader are there to try and um, rip through the midfield. Uh, and then, of course, we've got some control elements as well. And over here, we've got a very similar roster, starting out with Kevin. We've got Darth Vader and the Arf Troopers, but we also have clone Captain Rex. So that'll be really cool. He's a bit of a playmaker. He's very quick. He can move himself or allied Galactic Republic characters. They also gain hunkers. Um, he can shoot after the Arfs have taken a shot. Um, and he has some healing shenanigans built around hunkering as well. We've got the very familiar Django Fett Bounty Hunter, um, which I just explained. And we've also got some other Beskar armor wearing individuals in the Mandalorian Super Commandos. So a lot of midfield threat here for Kevin. Um, and most excitingly, a character that we haven't seen on the stream yet with Cad Bane. So... He has some displacement-esque abilities in How About You Step Aside, so he can force people to move away or give them the choice to move away from an objective. Um, whether they do or they do not triggers some various abilities. He's got a jump, very similar to Django and other bounty hunters. Um, and really cool is essentially after another, any other character makes an attack, uh, if Cad's not engaged, he can either do a jump or he can deal two damage to the target unit. So that will probably be coming into glorious effect here um, with a lot of these midfield characters like uh, Django and the Mandalorian Super Commandos and of course Darth Vader. Um, and if, yeah, basically if he can't do the two damage within range four, then of course he can jump towards one of the target characters, um, which allows him to get onto objectives very nicely. And he also comes with an identity of wounding. Uh, so basically he wants to, he wants his team to wound things, and if they do, they refresh Force, and Cad Bane can heal. So very, very exciting to see him, uh, and especially in the finals. So this is going to be a great little uh, little experience here. I'll get the timer started when the guys go. Um, I believe that we've got Morgan as has lost priority, so the first player is indeed Kevin. 
Um, so that will be interesting for sure. Uh, and in terms of where we've put things, we've got Darth Vader um, on Kevin's side, uh, countered by Count Dooku. And then we've had Cad Bane put down for Kevin, countered by Morgan's Darth Vader. So this will be really cool. I think the... Um, I'll be very interested to see what happens between the Darth Vader, Darth Tyrannus duel. Um, you know, Count Duke is quite a tank, uh, but it gets complicated with the um, with the AF troopers being there, of course. So let's have a look at the first objective: locate the asset. Okay, so we've got the snake sort of uh, vibe. We're shuffling our order decks here, and we're about to start the timer. Um, and there we go, timer has started. You can see we've got a ninety-minute timer coming up. There you go. Um, so it won't exactly match, but it'll give us a pretty good idea of what's going on. And the first draw is the Mandalorian Super Commandos. So we've previously seen them be thrown into the middle. I don't think that we'll see anything different here. Um, we might want to make the most of some elevation to make Vader's life a little bit more difficult. Um, but of course, Vader still will be able to uh, get up there um, with an advance, advance from Vader's fury. Um, but yeah, the Mandalorian Super Commandos are one of the more tanky um, supports in the game. So they're a pretty good draw in the first uh, little little part there. Um, of course, you know, um, they're also very good primary targeters. Uh, so they're very good at ganging up on enemy primaries and secondaries thanks to their beautiful combat tree. Um, but in this case, I think they'll just be used to take some objectives, of course, um, because you do want to maintain control of objectives uh, as soon as possible. That's exactly the name of the game. There's been a big debate about whether or not, whether or not to throw your supports forward if you get them early. Um, but I think, you know, you don't really want to fall behind in struggle one. But of course, if you guys have different opinions, please let us know in the chat. Um, and of course, if you want me to focus in on anything or talk about anything specific, uh, don't hesitate to ask. I'm very receptive and I'm just hoping to make this stream the best it can be. Uh, and yeah, guys, let me know who you're rooting for. Who do you want to see take out the uh, the league? It's going to be very exciting um, and I can't I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait to see the victor. Um, and yeah, we've got Kevin, I think, from the United States of America and Morgan from Australia. So it's a really cool little international game here. Um, and hopefully, I mean, I don't want to be biased, but uh, sort of hoping for uh, a fellow Aussie to take it home. So we've seen a move, we've seen a jump, and now we're seeing a take cover um, from the Mandalorian Super Commando. So we will take control of two objectives, them being the closest to the viewing screen. Of course, you won't score them because it is the first activation. Uh, and Morgan will take control of the back left top objective over there. So let's have a look at Morgan's first draw. It is Darth Vader. That is pretty good. Um, he should be able to make it up with a move. There is an ingress point just here. Um, that'll get him up and then he can bait his fury. Um, and yeah, we can go and see if we can chop chop. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the math is. Uh, he'll probably want to take extra dice to roll. Sorry, he'd probably want to take damage to roll some extra dice um, just to maximize his chances, of course, of, of wounding these Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, and it will be a good a good thing if he can get the wound here. Um, uh, but if not, he'll probably be able to take control of the objective anyway, uh, simply because um, Vader does have some nice pushes on his combat tree. So let's go and have a look at what combat tree Morgan is in. Ooh, Dark Rage. So, yeah, so he's got second and third successes pushes, which will be definitely enough to get this Mandalorian Super Commander off the point. Um, so we've seen a move there. Now we're seeing a Vader's Fury. Vader's Fury, of course, is the ability that allows um, Vader to add two to the damage pool. So basically, Vader does um, seven damage and about three successes, which puts him in line with the Anakins and the Maces, etc. And you can see just in the top left there, Vader has indeed taken two extra damage to roll extra die. So this is going to be a 10v5. And we'll have a look. Pretty good roll from Vader and a great roll from Kevin. So it looks like four blocks and it'll be four criticals going through, which is going to be enough to wound them, I believe. Um, because expertise, two expertise goes to two criticals for Vader. Um, so let's have a look. It should be enough. Straight raw damage. Oop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, yep. And then adding the two extra dice in there as well. So that should be enough indeed. I'm just gonna hide these strike teams just so we can see the overlays a little bit better. Just bear with me, turning them off. Just so we can see the overlay a little bit better. We understand I think what we're playing and if you guys want me to put them back up, please let me know. 
Okay, so um, we've basically um, wounded these um, these Mandalorian Super Commandos with Darth Vader. Not uncommon. Vader basically is the expert at wounding enemy secondary characters alongside Grievous uh, in that category. Uh, and then we're going to take control of the objective. We're going to score a momentum and Morgan is going to score two points. So a very good activation early on for Morgan. We've seen another Darth Vader being pulled for Kevin, um, but we are of course going to reserve it. We've pulled the Shatter Point now. And we're probably debating whether or not we want to reserve that or... Sorry, not reserve it, but uh, shuffle it back in or draw. So we're just having a think here. Yep. So we're going to spend another force to draw another card. Uh, we think. Still thinking. Still thinking. Yep. Another reserve. Sorry, another force spent um, to put the shuffle back and then we get a Django. So Django is not a bad shout here either. Um, in fact, he's quite good at controlling Darth Vader. Uh, he'll definitely be able to get up to Darth Vader's point. Um, Django is of course just over here where the blue hand is. Yep. I'm gonna put the names back on just so we can see exactly who is on what side. Just bear with me for one second. So yeah, I think Django's a good pull here. He can get uh, Vader off of the ob ob objective here and probably score it back. Uh, and the one thing that I think um, we need to remember when we're dealing with Vader is that Vader's whole activation really stems on the fact that he can do a double move to get into the action. So as soon as you're able to mitigate that via a pin or some, you know, some really good damage, um, it goes a long way in terms of controlling him. So what we're probably hoping for in terms of Kevin is doing a shot into Vader and triggering um, the uh, capture wire for free um, off of the third success here. Um, so we'll see what happens just so we can displace Vader and put a pin on him and maybe some other conditions. So we've got a pretty good roll there. That's four hits, two crits into Vader's uh, four expertise, which I think is three blocks. So we're probably gonna get three down the tree there for um, for Kevin, let's just have, uh, sorry, yeah, for, for Django. Um, four expertise is three blocks, yep. So it's gonna be three down the tree, which is of course going to be enough to trigger capture wire uh, for free, which is strong. So we're gonna basically pull, um, uh, pull Vader off the point there, give him a pin and a strain and three damage from the combat tree as well. Uh, unless of course Django does want to trigger the the jump and five damage and then manually pay for capture wire just so Django can get on the point because I'm not sure if he's actually within two there. So we'll have to see what he does. It looks like he is going to go for the jump, um, which is, yep, yeah, that's fair enough. And he does have a lot of refreshing capacity with Cad Bane. Um, of course, you know, it looks like he's, he's really low on force at the moment, um, but I'll just highlight Cad Bane's ability one more time in that, um, oops, combat tree in that uh, when an allied character wounds an enemy unit after the effect is resolved refresh one uh, and then cad can heal once as well and of course if the allied character is a bounty hunter refresh an additional force so you know Django getting a wound is two force back um, cad bane getting a wound is two force back so there's a lot of ways that he can get force back here um, so here we go guys we've seen manually being paid for capture wire uh, and that means of course Vader is on seven damage and has a strain <clears throat> Ragin uh, whose voice is that it is me uh, Tom Harper <laughs> uh, of Sydney City Space Slugs uh, background um, and I hope you enjoy my voice if there's anything you want me to do let me know um, so we've pulled the Magna Guard <laughs> We've, hey, hey Ali, how you going? Um, we've pulled the Magna Guard, we're gonna put them in reserve and now we've put, um, J uh, sorry, Count Dooku. Um, we've pulled Count Dooku. So we're gonna go with him. He of course gets to trigger um, his leader of the Separatist army. So basically he chooses another Separatist Alliance unit within three and they get to dash. Um, he will dash first, then they will dash, and then he will move. And Dooku is just a really good character to get up in the middle. Um, he's, he's not very fragile, he's quite tanky. Um, he's got a lot of ways to turn off um, you know, enemy hits, and then he gets some response uh, abilities like moving and attacking, etc. Um, if there's no hits in the pool. So he's got a, a, really, a couple of really nice little abilities here, especially when you have the ability to spend force. And you can see that Morgan's um, quite flush with force on his side. So you can see that Darth Vader needs to spend one, Django spends one to two, after troopers don't really need to spend any uh, unless they get wounded. Uh, Dooku inherently spends zero 
and then Barris hopes to spend up to three. So really we've got one, two, three, four, maybe five, and then you've got three left in the tank. Um, and that's before Dooku's refreshing uh, abilities as well. So a lot of force to play with for Morgan. So he can basically just make the most of any force ability that he's got. So we'll see what he does. Looks like he's going to go up to the ingress point. Um, he's going to take the center point here um, so he can make the most of his cheeky little um, movements. And then he'll also get to trigger the Magna Guards movement. So Morgan's looking to actually score three points here without any attacking. Um, so you can see Magna Guard. No, okay. So the Magna Guard are actually going to go up onto the center point as well just to try and block the ingress point there to make it harder for Darth Vader on Kevin's side to get up there and start attacking. And if uh, Vader does get up there, then of course, um, Intercede will trigger on the Magna Guard. And Intercede, of course, says, while this unit is not wounded, enemy characters engaged with one or more characters in this unit cannot attack allied primary or secondary characters. So essentially they body block um, while they're engaged. And we've got two points being scored for uh, Morgan. And we'll have to see what we decide to pull. We're not going to be pulling Darth Vader. We are going to be pulling Cad Bane. So that's a, a good little trigger. Cad Bane probably wants to start mixing it up um, and turning off the intercede abilities for um, for Morgan. But he also might just try and get Darth Vader down to very low health. Um, so, you know, Django can trigger not so fast on Vader's next activation. So we'll see how we go here. Um, Cad Bane's a really interesting primary. You know, he's only um, he's he's what we call a low point primary in that he 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 shouldn't inherently have a lot of value because he can bring so many points in his roster. Um, but you can see that uh, Kevin has decided to play a point down here, which is really interesting. Um, and he hasn't decided to bring a five point secondary or five point support. Um, so he's just believing in Cad, which is very very cool. So he's deciding on the combat tree here to best attack Vader with, I think. Um, and of course, remember guys, if he does wound Darth Vader, uh, he will get two force back and Cad will be able to heal. So we'll see what we decide. Looks like we've landed on needs no introduction, um, maybe for some extra um, conditions uh, and some jump capacity, etc. So let's go and see what we do. So not a great roll from Kevin's side uh, and a pretty good roll from Morgan. So that's going to be four blocks on Morgan. Three expertise on Kevin is uh, one crit and a hit. So it's just going to be one crit going through, which is probably not what Kevin wanted to see. But it, it is important to note that Vader is now going to be on nine health, which means that he's only three away from getting wounded, um, putting him in striking distance of, um, you know, average striking distance of... Uh, of Django's not so fast. So we've scored two points and a momentum for both players because it's landed in the middle and we'll see what uh, Morgan pulls and it is going to be Barris Offy. So we don't really, yeah, so Barris Offy probably isn't a huge pull, but she can get over there uh, and actually secure um, the point for Darth Vader um, because she's incredibly fast. She can double move. Um, she could also move, take cover, and then move again with force speed and then trigger force push. Um, but it looks like she actually won't need to spend that much, um, all of her actions on, on doing so. So I'll be interested to see what she does here. Um, pushing off uh, Django is a really good idea because not only does it turn off um, or gain back the objective for Darth Vader um, based on where they're positioned, but it also gets Django out of his not so fast threat range uh, onto um, Darth Vader, which is super clutch here. G'day Desert Spiral, thanks for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the stream and let us know who you're basically going for. Uh, hey Cat Daddy, um, hope you're enjoying yourself as well. Um, and yeah, let us know who, who we're going for right now. So we've seen Barris Offy do a move, a force speed, um, a force push. And now of course she's taken cover just to get in range of this objective as well. So once Darth Vader gets wounded, if he gets wounded, uh, we won't of course... Um, we won't, of course, uh, lose the objective straight away. And thanks so much, Desert Spiral, for your Prime subscription. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you again. Uh, okay, so we've got Rex pulled here. So this is interesting. We can move a few of um, the Galactic Republic units. Um, Desert Spiral, the score is here. I'm trying to keep the struggle tracker um, in range. This is only struggle one. Um, so basically, you can see up at the top left and right, I've got struggles one um, advertised. 
when a player wins the struggle, I'll put a card up there just to have a, a visual um, sort of guide as to where we are. Um, okay, so we've pulled Rex. We've decided to move the ARF Troopers with his uh, Get a Move on Soldier, which is a really good idea because it's going to get the, um, the exposed tokens a little bit more relevant. And then we're going to have Rex move, probably trigger a defensive maneuver and shoot into uh, an exposed Magna Guard or uh, Count Dooku. So we'll see what happens there. Um, we'll probably be shooting into, I want to say... I feel like maybe the Magna Guard, or maybe he just goes for um, uh, Dooku to try and make him a little bit more fragile. But um, it's always a good idea, I think, to, to have a crack at the Magna Guard because it turns off a lot of their abilities. Um, it you know it means that you can't trigger Intercede because they're wounded, and we are going for the Magna Guard, yep. All right, so seven dice into an exposed Magna Guard, undoubtedly, because of the Arf Troopers. Uh, and let's see, Rex is a pretty good shot, uh, and that's a pretty good roll. So it's going to be six hits into one bl two blocks. Um, so four going through, which is really good on Rex's tree. Uh, he'll probably be able to displace those Magna Guard completely and get them out of intercede range for Count Dooku, um, forcing Morgan's hand to, of course, you know, um, activate them out of reserve and put them back onto the point to protect Count Dooku. Um, and that's also going to sort of really force Morgan's hand because we know that Darth Vader is in reserve and willing to have a crack at a potentially exposed Count Dooku as well. Um, so we are going for the push uh, tree, which I think is a good idea, uh, which is going to end up being three damage, a pin, and a push. It's also going to mean that you can get two heals on uh, on Rex, but of course that isn't going to be triggering here. So first push probably won't make it off the building. That's why we needed to go for the second one as well, because we're going to land on that little flower pot down the bottom. Um, but the second push will definitely make him uh, get him off the point there. So he's going to go to the edge and then push uh, again the second time so yep that'll end up being um of, co of course rex will be able to follow up there uh so it'll be a two-point swing back to kevin um which is putting morgan you know dangerously in striking range of winning struggle number one quite quickly so there's the first push guys and now we're seeing the second one um will be interesting to see if kevin wants to follow up he probably doesn't want to follow up on both but here we go here's the follow-up for the first one um, which will get him onto the point and claim it, which is great. Um, yep, Darth Morgan number one. So we've got a couple of a uh, couple of Kevin supporters in the chat, um, and a couple of Darth Morgan supporters in the chat as well. So very very cool. G'day, the Wargaming Dad. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying the stream. Of it, this is, of course, if you've just tuned in, uh, the the TTS League final for Shatterpoint. This is the first one that's ever been run. Um, and yeah, super excited to be able to bring you this content um, and super excited for streaming in the future as well. So there's the second push. We probably won't get a follow-up with Rex. We will claim the point uh, and we don't need to spend, um, more importantly, any force um, to trigger um, any of his abilities, which is good. Um, because it means that Darth Vader will, of course, have some force for his, um, what is it called? Vader's Fury. Yep, for the double advance there. So very, very cool. But uh, of course, Morgan only needs one wound or momentum to get the win here. Or of course, pushing a character off a point like Rex. Um, we have pulled the Arf Troopers, so it's not looking likely um, that we will get the wound here. Um, let's just have a think. Yeah, no one's wounded on or even close to injured on Kevin's side. Uh, the only, I guess, viable target would have been um, the Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, but of course, they are wounded already and out of the count. So we're basically just going to get prepared for struggle number two with the ARF Troopers here. Um, so you can see that Morgan's positioned um, ARF Trooper number one uh, on his rear point here and ARF Trooper number two within two of this uh, objective for the second struggle and of course, third struggle. Looks like we're contemplating a defensive maneuver. It will still give him the ability to claim this objective uh, and it will also put him in range five of Captain Rex, maybe to put some conditions on and get a lucky shot, etc. cetera. Um, Rex is not steadfast at this point. Um, so there is you know, a world where um, we could do some funky stuff with pushing. Do they have a reposition on the AFs? No, okay, so there's no world that we can take that objective off of Rex, but we could put some conditions on him, um, which will you know, limit his capacity to participate in the game at a later date, or of course, force his hand um, in terms of you know, spending 
hunk of tokens on himself for those for those cheeky heals. So a good roll there. It's going to be four hits, two crits, uh, and it's going to be only one block for poor Rex, which is of course going to mean that the Arfs get their full tree. Um, they have a very short tree, which is quite nice on a support especially one that rolls that many dice. Um, so probably going to go straight up the top with an expose, a push, a pin, and five damage. Yep, five damage. Uh, let's have a look at what we've put on Rex. That is exactly what's happened. Expose, pin, push, five damage. And of course, we can push Rex here because he does not have a hunker token uh, and therefore is not steadfast. Um, so it is going to only be three points scored for Morgan. So the struggle is not quite one, um, but it is one away and we'll see how we can counter. I wonder if we go for a big play with Darth Vader here with a double advance from Vader's Fury uh, and a crack into um, the old uh, Count Dooku. Let's see. We haven't pulled a card. We are thinking and contemplating about the old Vader pull here. And um, I'm tempted. I mean, I'd be tempted. Uh, unless you want to save Darth Vader's activation, of course, for early in the second struggle. Um, but, you know, you're going to get a wound potentially here on Dooku. Um, no, nope, we've decided to pull. Uh, but we could still see a, uh, a count, uh, sorry, Darth Vader activation here, unless we want to go again for something like Cad Bane or even Django. Django could jump back up, take the point off of the two um, uh, sort of dark jedi or force users down there um, and he could of course put some wounds on vader which will indeed get some force back as well so i'll be very interested to see what kevin decides to go with here um, i have a feeling it's Django just to get him back into position um, so he can trigger not so fast uh, but looks like we actually might be going with cad bane so we're going to do a rocket boots up to the top um, yeah, I feel like it's Django just because he's got a he's got a nicer expertise tree on his ranged attacks. He's a little bit more consistent. We only need three damage on Vader, which is just two successes uh, for count uh, for Django. And looks like we are, we are going to go for Django. So what we've had is a focus into a jump um, from my client is getting impatient on Django. Uh, no crits here though. Ooh, looks like we've only got one success, which is a massive swing there. Um, no crits for Django is, is absolutely devastating to be honest. Um, but we are still going to be able to do some stuff about this. So basically we've got two successes going in, which is putting uh, Darth Vader on, of course, uh, 11, but we could also have one point triggered for a capture wire to pull Vader, uh, which is going to give him another pin, which would of course wound him um, because you know he's already got a pin, and the second condition of the same type will of course um, you know double up the the damage. Uh, and we're just having a look to see uh, about Vader's fury, I think. Yep, so we're definitely seeing the capture wire being triggered here um, to wound him, which will of course give. Uh, um, Kevin two force, uh, actually four force back, which is massive. So we'll see how this works here, guys. It's kind of cool. Um, so we've wounded Darth Vader with Django. I'll show you this. Django gets his, I'm just looking to get paid where he double heals and, uh, refreshes two force. And then of course, Cad Bane's trigger happens. Uh, let me get this a better screen. Cad Bane's trigger happens where a bounty hunters wounded someone, you refresh two force, and then Cad Bane, uh, of course, gets a heal as well. So pretty savage. Um, Django's nicely positioned now for some not so fast shenanigans um, onto Barris Offy to soften her up for future activations. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're seeing a jump onto. Django here just to put him in a little bit more precarious situation where he can threaten the aft troopers and Barris with his not so fast uh, and we're seeing a three point return for Kevin there um, so three points back and a momentum two momentum in fact uh, one for the wound and one for what just happened but uh, of course the struggle is still in the grasp of Morgan um, because he only needs to get uh, one wound here Oh no, I'm so sorry. We need two, a two point swing here for Morgan. So we need basically um, to get Rex off that point uh, and of course uh, to wound him as well, which I think is possible now that Rex only has four health left and he is exposed. Um, so yeah, Morgan's seen that. He's gonna start measuring um, for this as well. Um, the Magna Guard, the only problem with the Magna Guard is that um, they don't, they're not the fastest unless they have separatist support. So it looks like he can get in here, uh, but it is, uh, it is a bit dicey. Um, it's close. Uh, I want to say yes, but it is close. So we're thinking about it. Uh, we're thinking about it. 
and we're decided to draw instead. We're not going to go with um, uh, with the Magna Guard just because it might not actually work out. Um, but we are going to go with Django to get the point off. Uh, off. So it's Django on Django action. Um, it's very unlikely that uh, Django wounds Django thanks to Beskar armor, etc. Um, but it is possible, of course, and uh, worth a crack because Django is one of those uh, secondaries that does a lot of damage. Uh, he can max out at 10 damage on his combat tree, uh, 11 if you are having a crack in combat, which is pretty savage. Um, and of course, you know, Django can have a crack in combat um, because he also is bringing Darth Vader. Um, so he can take some extra damage and roll some extra dice. But his combat tree in melee is not as strong as his ranged combat tree, especially against uh, a character with Beskar armor as well, because their defensive expertise is fantastic. So let's see what we're thinking. We've done a, a jump uh, from Django. We're looking for uh, potentially an um, uh, move. Uh, I see what's happening here. Okay, cool. This is pretty good. So it looks like we've jumped. Um, we're going to have a crack into this Django. Um, so Django and Django. Let's have a look. Oh, a great roll from both players here. So uh, it looks like three crits and uh, three blocks. All right. So we're gonna get three successes here. That's gonna be a free capture wire, um, which is going to allow um, Barris, of course, to gain control of the center objective. Uh, but it also could give um, Django a free jump here. So I think we're gonna take the free jump, right? Uh, then we're gonna manually spend for uh, capture wire to get Django off that point. That will, of course, give Barris control of this objective. Uh, and then Django can do an advance um, to take control of this objective here because these Mandalorian Super Commandos are, of course, wounded. So we've done five damage to D Django and a strain. I'll just show you that result on the combat tree. So we've gone topside. We're going to manually spend for the um, capture wire to get Django off this platform and out of range two of the objective. And then probably going to try and trigger in advance just to see if we get in range two of this objective down here. Um, not... You know, it's not 100% um, guaranteed. It might be a little bit too far away, but it's definitely worth trying. Um, and now you've got uh, Django in a position where he can also um, do a not so fast. But no, we're not going to go for it. Probably too far away and uh, might have been too finicky trying to get all of those uh, figured out, like all those intricate movements figured out at the same time. Um, so we're going to also go into the center here to get into <laughs> three units uh, in uh, Django's not so fast range. Um, so of course we've got the uh, the Mando Subos, uh, we've got Cad Bane, and we've got it's actually four, isn't it? No, no, that's Darth. That's uh, Morgan's Darth Vader. So three points scored uh, for Morgan, and let's see what we decide to do. So we're probably going to go with Vader here. Probably going to go for the expose on Count Dooku, um, but that's of course going to give some movement shenanigans um, to Count Dooku if Kevin does wound uh, Count Dooku here, which is going to put you know uh, Morgan in in the control seat for the next turn because he's going to be probably moving the man the Magna Guard closer to Captain Rex, which is definitely going to put Captain Rex in striking range of uh, of the Magna Guard. So we'll see how Kevin decides to go around this. It's gonna be a very, very interesting activation. Um, I'm not sure what we're measuring for. I think he knows that he's got ARF troopers in the bag next. Um, so he could actually just be deciding to take the ARF troopers for a ride, um, which isn't a bad shout. It puts you know a second body on that objective, which we know is the objective of contention because uh, that's, that's sort of what's up in the air for um, for Kevin and Morgan at the moment. We know that if, if Morgan goes with his Magna Guard uh, and he's in range of Rex, then he can get that double momentum swing to win the turn. Um, so that's sort of what we probably need to block up here. What do you reckon, guys? Should we go for the ARF Troopers or for Darth Vader? Let me know in the chat. Um, and let's have a look. So yeah, Morgan did, uh, I think, miss the Darth... Uh, the Count Dooku trigger, good, good catch, guys. But it, uh, it is not a mandatory trigger, so we, uh, I can't jump in and, and let them know. Um, okay, so we're going for for Darth Vader here. So we're probably going to, we might even um, put Vader on this objective up here, and instead of like sending him after Count Dooku, we might just um, go for a saber throw in, into an exposed Count Dooku, which isn't a bad shout. Uh, we could put some. Um, conditions on him. I can't see what conditions we could put on because it's on the wrong uh, 
combat tree, um, but I think we're about to do that in a moment. So there's a Vader's Fury. Let's see what he decides to do. Okay. So we are going to go up the top. I mean, if we look, if we get the objective off Count Dooku, then of course, um, you know, Morgan probably can't win the struggle on the next activation, uh, depending on what the results are. So let's have a look. It's going to be two damage in the pool, probably going to be taking ten, uh, two damage on Darth Vader to roll 10 dice. Uh, and let's have a look. We are going to undoubtedly be exposing Count Dooku as well. Um, so no cheeky expertise for him. Yep, we've put the expose on, so there we go. Let's have a look. What do the dice results say? Is it gonna be good? You're gonna to have to get a good roll to take out Count Dooku, the tanky man that he is. And it is pretty good. So it's gonna be five crits going through there, guys. Four hits, five crits into three blocks. So it looks like uh, it is going to be a full tree of six, which is going to be a wounded Count Dooku, unless Morgan decides to spend some force uh, to change some hits into fails there. Um, so he is thinking about it. Um, remember, we've got... Uh, so he's probably doing some math. I'm not going to try and do it on the fly because I'm undoubtedly going to get it incorrect, but he's probably trying to use um, Count Dooku's ability called surely you can do better to get it so you know dooku has one or two um uh sorry vader is one or two successes short of a full tree so remember we have 10 damage on count dooku 10 health on count dooku um so we need to max out vader at nine or something similar so we can go one two three four five six seven eight so if he gets five successes he can get uh dooku um, if he gets four successes, I think he's prevented from getting Dooku. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, he could max out at eight with four successes, I believe. Um, so have we spent the force? It looks like we have. Uh, so it means that um, we'll just have to see how much damage we end up putting on Count Dooku. So good Dooku play. I think Dooku is quite, uh, quite resilient, even if he's exposed, thanks to his um, surely you can do better ability. Uh, I'm just going to take a sip of water. So we're probably trying to measure there um, to push Ka sorry to push um, Dooku into Cad Bane range, so Bane could add the extra two little um, uh, damage there that uh, that we needed. Let's see how much. Yeah, we put him on eight. Um, so we've got a few options for triggers here. Um, we can of course trigger Cad Bane's ability called uh, no one gets between me and my job. So this is what we were talking about at the beginning, guys. Um, if he's out of range four, um, Cad Bane can jump towards the target. And if he's within range four, Cad Bane can of course add two damage. Um, so what have we had? We've got a force being triggered um, for... Go force being triggered for Count Dooku. So it looks like we actually got rid of all of the hits in the roll, yep which means that uh, we've had twice the pride, double the fall being triggered. Um, Dooku's moved back up onto the point here in the center, preventing Vader from taking control of it. Um, uh, and we've had a strain being put on from somewhere as well. Let's have a look. So that probably would wound Dooku. Yeah, so the strain is being triggered uh, by Dooku himself, which is going to actually potentially push Vader off here as well. Okay, so I see what we're doing. I'll fill you guys in after we see the dice results. Three hits into, uh, I think, two expertise is just one block on Vader. It is. So we've got two successes going in with Count Dooku, which is going to be enough to uh, push Vader back off the point to maintain control by Kevin. So some really spicy do Dooku play there, guys. So essentially what we hap had happen is <laughs> we had Darth Vader come in, have a crack at uh, an exposed Count Dooku. Um, we basically blocked three with Count Dooku, and then we spent another force to uh, turn a hit into a fail with Surely You Can Do Better. Because there were no hits in the roll, then after all the, the, the entire tree was resolved, um, Dooku spent a force for twice the pride, double the fall. Now he was strained, so he did take three damage and wound himself here, but he got to make a five dice attack onto Vader um, and uh, push Vader off of the point, which essentially meant that even though Dooku was wounded, um, of course, uh, uh, he's now 
basically still uh, sorry, Duku was wounded, but uh, Kevin has no one, you know, basically on the point contesting. Um, so uh, he still maintained, Morgan still maintained control of the objective. So it's a really nice play there. We did have Cad Bane then spend a force with no one gets between me and my job uh, to try and get onto the point with the ingress point. Uh, but unfortunately, he's just short. So uh, basically, guaranteed struggle win for Morgan next activation. So he's able to just draw the Magna Guard and get them into a better position. Um, but yeah, big play, big Dooku play, big uh, big uh, Vader play, some really, really clutch interactions there. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that play. Very exciting. It gives me the, it, it rustles the jimmies, you know? It gets me really excited when I see plays like that. I love it. That's why I love Shatterpoint so much. Um, okay, so... We're going to move uh, the Magna Guard probably to maybe contest back left. Um, but first, it looks like we're just going to have an attack into Darth Vader. So six attack uh, six attack dice into some good defense dice. Looks like Kevin also didn't flip his expertise tree either. So he's, he's still on Dark Rage. Uh, and we've got three blocks there uh, into two crits going through. So it's just going to be a couple shoves and a couple damage. Nothing special. Um... And again, we don't really need to do anything crazy for Morgan here. We just want to make sure that we're playing a good positioning game um, because we want to make sure that we're in a commanding position for struggle number two. So uh, it's a couple pushes for Darth Vader. Um, looks like we're going to follow up with the Magna Guard to try and get on the point as well for next struggle um, uh, to contest it off of, uh, off, off of Rex there. I'm not sure if we'll be able to make it, um, but uh, it will be close. And we just want to keep Darth Vader engaged, it seems, as well. Yep. So we're going to try and keep Darth Vader engaged. It might have put us on the point. It's going to be close. Uh, and then the second Magna Guard um, can actually have a move as well to engage Vader. And, of course, contest back left point here. Um, and then this, the move action can just cement this Magna Guard. Um, the reason he's using a short tool there is because he is, of course, engaged with Darth Vader. Um, and now we can protect Count Dooku, give him some cover, take this objective, and potentially also, um, you know, contest, oh, sorry, engage with uh, Captain Rex as well. So we have had a struggle win. I am going to put that up on the table. Let's just have a quick look. So you guys can see um, up in the top left there, I've put a struggle card underneath Morgan's uh, name. So we will have um, that as an indicator that Morgan's won one struggle. We're resetting and let's have a think about what we've got next. So let's have a look at the objective card. We'll get the name in. So it's going to be, we've, we've been double crossed. So Kevin is of course going to be able to uh, choose the deployment map here. Um, so Rex isn't wounded. So both of these characters are contesting. Uh, we've basically got to choose, okay. So it looks like we're choosing this, the bottom one here. So it's going to be Morgan's back middle objective, which is contested by the aft trooper. Um, this objective here, which is in contention for both the Magna Guard and Captain Rex, and this objective, which is currently controlled by no one. But um, the next activation in Kevin's deck, I believe, are the aft troopers as well. So we will be able to gain control of a few of those objectives. Um, we've rolled the dice for the priority, or we're rolling now. It is going to be the diamond. So diamond is going to be uh, Kevin's home objective there. Um, so let's have a look how he responds. Okay. Yep, so we've got... Um, I think it's going to be the art troopers. Oh, sorry. My Siri's going crazy. Okay, Siri was talking to herself. Uh, creepy. All right, so the aft troopers are, of course, the last activation here. Um, they're going to be able to control or gain control of all these objectives and maybe even put some conditions onto um, the Magna Guard, which are really handy. Pinning the Magna Guard, especially in a roster that doesn't allow much Magna Guard movement, is a savage way to mitigate their effectiveness. Uh, and the aft troopers do have a pin on their first success. So that is a really, really good way of getting them there. Um, and of course, we've got enough force here, I believe, to trigger not so fast kid um, onto Rex so that's really cool as well um, there are a few things that we can do here looks like we're actually spending uh, one force for a defensive maneuver um, when a character in a clone unit ends a hunkering sort of gain ability within three of Rex they get to heal so there is a chance that you know 
We could get some heals onto Captain Rex, but we haven't ended close enough, unfortunately. Um, but we are going to be contesting this back objective. Um, so yeah, a couple of things that we can do here. I think we're going to try and go for these Magna Guard as hard as possible. We still also have one force in the tank, so we can trigger um, I'm Always First Kid on Rex as well to put in even 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 more damage into the Magna Guard. Um, so it looks like two blocks, three blocks on the Magnas into a very good roll uh, for the um, the ARF troopers. Looks like we are gonna get the full tree there. So we're probably gonna wanna go down the tree um, and expose. Oh, we'll probably just go straight across. So it's gonna be five damage, a pin and an expose, which is gonna make the next attack that much more spicy. Um, so let's see what we end up putting on the Magna Guard. Yeah, pin and expose and five damage. So they've got two damage left. Uh, which does, of course, allow them to get into the striking range of being wounded here, which is a, a good way to start the struggle, uh, a four-point swing, uh, essentially, with three points scored and a momentum. So we'll see how we respond. You know, Rex also might want to, considering that um, it is the last activation of the struggle, Rex might want to trigger um, I'm Always First Kid to get some heals, on himself um, he gets a dash and then a five dice attack um, which is a really good way he doesn't need to move so he can clear his pin with the dash and then he can heal twice to get rid of the expose and the damage um, so that's really spicy as well we are probably going to still see both of the ma the, the aft troopers shoot into um into the magna guard there though um, so let's have a look at what the second aft trooper does um, so we've got adam um, Oh, Adman B, sorry, uh, saying Kevin's Vader stuck fighting Magna Guard seems bad. Yep, they're pretty tanky, but um, if we get, you know, some damage here and wounding them, then Vader can potentially one-shot them in his next activation, forcing them to leave the board, um, but we'll see. Let's just have a quick look at what we rolled. Uh, it was one block into, um, what is it, five total successes, essentially, so that's another full tree, which is going to wound them, and again, I would be spending... Um, force for not so fast here oh sorry for um i'm always first kid just to make sure that we can get some heals uh on rex and get into a better position uh, as well uh, and it's also gonna make cad bane's um refresh a little less redundant um, because you're still spending it on something and, and doing something with it so another push um, interesting that we're pushing towards Darth Vader. Uh, it doesn't make a huge difference now, especially considering you know that the uh, the Magna Guard are wounded. Um, but maybe he's just also looking to get um, some some easy strikes uh, once the Magna Guard wake up, if they do, of course. So remember, guys, that was a defensive maneuver, and then it was a um, uh, an attack. So we still have a move for the Magna Guard, which uh, sorry for the for the Arf Troopers, which is probably going to be. Um, used to get the rearmost half trooper up on the point um, just to cement it and make it easier uh, or prevent it being so easy for Morgan to take it off of him. So we'll see what we do. I would really love to see the um, the force being spent on I'm Always First Kid, especially considering there's nothing else to do it on, but it doesn't look like we are going to use it. Um, so we're refreshing. Uh, we've scored four points, three struggle cubes, and a momentum for Kevin. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't spend uh, for I'm Always First. Okay. And the only reason I say that, guys, is just because we could have cleared the pin. We could have um, potentially gotten far down our, um, our, our track here um, to get some heals, um, maybe even another pin and some, you know, some extra conditions, etc., cetera, um, and clear some conditions off of Rex. So that, that feels clutch at this point. Um, and because there's nothing, there's no downside to doing it um, uh, is, uh, is maybe the detriment there, I think. Um, uh, so we'll see how much that impacts the board. So what's the first draw, uh, or the last draw, I should say, is uh, Count Dooku. Um, the priority objective is Morgan's home objective, so he's got that one nice and firm. Um, we are thinking of maybe going for Count Dooku here, I believe. Um, there's not much else that I guess Morgan can impact on that side of the board. Probably don't want to wake up the Magna Guard, but that's not a bad shout either. Um, considering that they could sort of mosey on up there um, and push some of these characters out of um, the objective range and get them into a more commanding position. 
So that could be could be considered as well, uh, but it does put them sort of into that striking range of Vader getting the one shot on them um, and making their next activation be their last. So um, we are thinking about it though. I think we can probably take this objective off of off of Kevin um, should we decide to go with the Magna Guard, put both of them um, onto the objective. One of them hits Vader and one of them hits the AF Trooper that is contesting. And that's not a bad play. Um, that is not a bad play either. So we'll have to see who we decide to go with. I think, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so we're going with the Magna Guard. Um, unless this is, of course, Dooku um, that's doing it. We'll have to see. No, we've moved both. So th we are going with the Magna Guard. We're waking them up. Yep, waking them up. Uh, and we're going to probably have a crack into Darth Vader and into the Arf Trooper here just to try and take the point, get a big uh, three-point swing plus a momentum uh, for Morgan as well. Um, and uh, yeah, see how much uh, combat and violence ends up on this side of the board. So Vader getting struck by the first Magna Guard. Um, Vader is uh, in wound distance here. So we'll see what happens. So we've got a pretty good roll. Um, three hits, two crits into Vader, uh, who has blocked four. So just two crits going through, which would be enough to wound Darth Vader. Oh, how much, how much damage does he have? Four left. So it's not going to be enough to wound Darth Vader, which is actually probably pretty good for Morgan, um, considering you don't want to trigger um, the Sith Lord Strikes Back too early because it will be able to shore up um, a tie on this objective um, if if uh, this ARF trooper is not displaced by this Magna Guard. Because um, I'm not sure if Rex is in range there. I, uh, does anyone remember? I'm not entirely sure if Rex is in range of the objective. Um, so that, that's actually probably the best case scenario for Kevin, not actually wounding Vader, getting two pushes on him. He won't be able to trigger, you know, the Sith Lord strikes back um, and will safely take this objective off of Kevin um, for a momentum plus three struggle points uh, swing. So Vader's left on one. Uh, yeah, so Cat Daddy, um, yes, he, he did get shoved out, um, but had he have wounded Vader, uh, we could have seen the Sith Lord strikes back so he can immediately dash and make a five dice melee attack. Oh, you're saying, um, you're saying Rex? Yes, I, he, I think he is also, I do think he's out of range, yeah. Uh, and now we're seeing the Arf Trooper getting attacked by the Magna Guard. Um, really, really good roll there um, from the Magna Guard. Looks like they took two damage to roll extra dice um, uh, from Darth Vader's identity. Uh, so yeah, we've basically got five hits, three crits there into two blocks. So it will be a full tree for the Magna Guard. I think they max out at seven. One, two, three, four, five. No, they max out at six. So we can't wound the ARF Troopers, but we'll put them dangerously close to getting wounded. Um, and we get a bunch of nice conditions on them. And we can also engage Rex there as well. So I think, you know, this, this obviously it's, it's easy for me to say this in the, uh, in the commentary booth, but had Kevin last turn um, triggered I'm always first kid on Rex just to double down on the number of bodies on that point, I think it would have made a, a pretty good difference. Um, it would have put Rex in a better position. Uh, it would have put um, Rex with some heals. Um, and, you know, anyway, uh, I think that is a pretty, that's a pretty brutal swing um, there for Morgan. That's a momentum and four struggle points as well um, because he's basically taking control of this objective um, because he's gotten up the elevation. Um, he's going to have control of this one. I guess we'll, we're about to find out whether or not Rex is in range. Yep. Rex is not in range, so Cat Daddy, you are correct. So big, big swing from Morgan there. Um, big, big swing. And we'll see how uh, Kevin responds. So Shatterpoint coming off the grid uh, early up. So we'll see what we do. We could actually see Rex here. Um, Rex could uh, potentially um, maybe shoot. Mm, no, Rex isn't a good one. I mean, we could use his ability to get uh, one of the ARF troopers up to contest against the Magna Guards. Um, but they're not in wounding distance for Rex. So I don't think that's the play. Rex is also pinned and exposed, etc. So probably not there. Um, Shatterpoint. I mean, this is dicey. Who do we go with? We need to be able to swing a lot of points here. Um, thanks, Desert Spiral, for the follow. Really appreciate it. Hey, Reef. 
Uh, we've got, um, yep, so the struggle score, you can see up the top left and right, um, we've got struggles one. So Morgan's got one struggle. Um, and just in his activation, then he had a massive swing um, in terms of taking four. Um, so all three objectives. So it's looking pretty good for Morgan. He's in a firm control of, uh, of struggle two at this stage, but it is only Kevin's second activation. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 tricky. Um, we we were spoiled for choice in the MCP overlay days. The stream overlay is fantastic in MCP. So if anyone knows any coders out there willing to do it for free and out of the goodness of their heart, that'd be amazing because I know absolutely nothing about technology. <laughs> um, so yeah, but yeah, we're we're getting there. We're just trying to sort of make some some slight tweaks and changes uh, to the overlay. Um, okay, so who did we decide to go with? It looks like we are going with Rex, unless we may be going with the Aft Troopers. The Aft Troopers aren't a bad shout. It feels funny, but we can push both Magna Guards off of these objectives here. Um, no, we're going with Rex. Okay, um, we are going with Rex. So we're going to put a defensive maneuver, um, and we'll see if we can get in range of the Ingress Point, which I think we can. Um, Oh no, so we are going with, yeah, so we're going with the Aft Troopers. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. So basically we're going to um, try and go for some pushes on um, the Magna Guard and then we're probably going to start triggering I'm Always First Kid on Rex to, to get a, a follow-up attack. Um, so we'll see what happens. We're going for the back uh, Magna Guard first. Um, let's have a look. Got a three block roll for the Magna Guard and we've got a, I think two crits and a hit for the Aft Troopers. Um, Regardless, it will be enough to get them pushed off. Two crits, okay. So it will be enough to get this Magna Guard pushed off of the point here. Um, I think they've got a second success push, yeah. So two damage, a pin and a shove, um, which is good. And then this Aft Trooper down here is gonna have a crack at this Magna Guard with a ranged attack, undoubtedly. Um, and that's gonna allow Rex to also follow up as well um, and have a crack with I'm Always First Kid. Uh, and even potentially, hopefully, um, you know, um, heal some damage and get some pushes, etc. So let's have a think. Um, I, I don't see any other way that we can pull these points back. Um, so there's the shove. And we're about to see the attack from the lower aft trooper. This is why I really like Rex. You know, he's got a, he's got a completely unique uh, way to add um, to your strike team's capacity to, to do things, you know. Um, You'd have to get really lucky without Rex to, to get exactly the sort of situation that you want here. Um, in fact, I don't think you could unless you wounded the Aft Troopers because one shove is not enough to get them off the point from where they are at the moment. So another, it's a four block roll from the, uh, from the Magna Guard, which is great, but it is a three crit roll for the Aft Troopers. So it will be enough um, to get a shove and a pin. So it will be, because they've already got the pin, it'll be uh, two damage, three damage, four damage. Um, a shove and a condition of choice. We're probably going to go for the expose here just to maximize Captain Rex's uh, capacity to wound um, uh, because we are now on seven. Yep, so seven damage on the, on, the, uh, on the Magna Guard and we can trigger the dash off of Rex uh, and um, this is from uh, I'm Always First Kid. So he's going to get to dash and then he either gets to make a melee or a ranged attacks um, uh, into one of the target characters, uh, rolling five dice into an exposed Magna Guard. So pretty good play. Uh, let's see what the dice say. Uh, Rex has got a really nice expertise tree, um, so hopefully get some good results here. We'll see. I see some crits. Oh, it's a really good roll. So it's uh, two crits and three hits into two blocks. So... Um, uh, so it's three going through, which is not enough for the heals, but it is enough... Sorry, it is enough for the heals. So it's two pushes, two damage, and uh, it'll be uh, two heals. Or we can just do the three damage and wound the Magna Guard, which is probably the best thing to do here. Um, forego the wounding, um, sorry, forego the, the, the healing on Rex uh, and some of the conditions and shoves and instead go for the damage and just wound them um, because it's gonna take them out of contention for the objectives for basically the entire struggle. And it will also make their next activation their last, uh, which, is, which is pretty savage. So I would go for the wound. Um, we have gone for the wound. You can see that Morgan's uh, put the extra tokens there. 
Um, so that's going to score a momentum and a three point swing back to Kevin. So that's a really good way of countering uh, what just uh, what just happened from Morgan. Um, so yep, good plays there. That's the power of Rex, uh, especially paired with some of his clone troopers. Uh, unfortunately, you just need to make sure that he's A, not wounded and B, you've got enough force to spend um, on doing plays like that. So yep, big point swing back to, uh, to Kevin. And we've got the priority objective rolling up on Morgan's home again. Uh, and we've pulled the Magna Guard. So already we're starting to, to see the, the issues here. We have to put them in reserve um, because you know you don't want them to get removed from the table. And we've got Barris Offy being pulled. So do we forego um, the struggle or do we try and make a difference? You know, Barris Offy can easily get over there, I think. She can uh, double move. Um, with a force speed and then do a force push and potentially take cover uh, to take the point and that looks like it is the play and it seems as though we've decided not to trigger not so fast on to Django um, probably because he's strained and it would leave him with one health remaining um, which would mean that Morgan's <laughs> Morgan's uh, Django will of course be uh, able to not so fast him so here's the force push looks like we're actually triggering the force push onto Django here um, to get him maybe out of um, out of out of not so fast range or just a little bit out of the action here which is pretty savage um, so yeah we've got a double move maybe Morgan thinks or knows that he can get from this point to the aft point because Barris Offy is very very quick so we'll have to see I think it actually can if you get a, an advance into about here or you just go up on the middle point to um, have a good chance of taking it for the next struggle or you can just use this ingress point on the other side to get down there as well. So it's a cheeky way of, uh, of getting some distance. So yeah, that was a move. We're probably gonna see yeah, a move down to the ingress point there, which is gonna allow him to pop down over to here um, and have a crack in these aft troopers. It's almost guaranteed that they're wounded because they only need two points uh, to wound them two points of damage, which is just one success on Barris. She's got a really nice expertise tree. We don't need to roll extra dice here um, or take damage for extra dice and we're gonna roll. Um, and yeah, she's got a beautiful expertise tree, a beautiful combat tree. So I think that's actually two crits and three hits into two blocks. So yeah, um, it is what it is. Barris will be able to take that point and that is a momentum and a three point swing for Morgan. So this is a really, really, uh, uh, really, really uh, tight struggle here. Uh, Cat Daddy, yes, it does feel bad shadow pointing offs, but it was indeed a great play. And, and all of that, I think um, you wouldn't be able to do things like that without Rex. And I think that's where the strength of Rex comes in. You know, he doesn't have any inherent um, out of combat action displacement, but he does allow you to be a very, very, very big force multiplier for your own clones. So very cool play there for sure. So unfortunately, uh, Barris, I think even without the ingress points, she would have been able to clear um, the entire um, board here because of a double advance. She's incredibly fast. Uh, and then she could have probably always swung into these aft troopers. Um, and now I'm not sure how far we got down the combat tree. We could figure it out. It was two blocks on the aft troopers and we had inherently one hit, one crit and a few expertise. Um, yeah. So it would have been uh, two crits and that's it. So that'd be enough for a reposition um, and one shove. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so um, three points to Morgan and a momentum and we'll see how Kevin responds. So we've got Django. Looks like we're gonna put Django in reserve. Um, yep, fair enough. Probably wanna keep him um, for a big, big play. And here are the Super Mandalorian Commandos, or the Mandalorian Super Commandos, I should say. So a good draw here. They have the potential to, you know, to, to, to get a lot of uh, damage here, but unfortunately, they're very far away. Um, so we might actually, that actually might not be what Kevin wanted to see at all there. Um, he's probably hoping for a, a card pool, you know, of, of maybe uh, Vader, or Rex even, uh, or something similar, but uh, the Mandos are very far away. I'm not sure how much they'll actually be able to contribute here. We did have a force being spent there for not so fast. Looks like we got three damage putting them, putting on them there, and we'll see what we can do. We need to score points, otherwise it's gonna be a massive swing for Morgan. Um, we're probably gonna be relying on maybe a move 
Um, a Mandalorians are stronger together and then a jump and potentially some ranged attacks into the ARF troopers. Um, we could also maybe just melee this ARF trooper down here uh, and hope for some good jumps onto the point um, to take it off, which I think is probably what we're going to do. It'll also mean that Cad Bane can add the damage um, onto this uh, little guy down here um, to make sure that you know we, we seal the deal and get the wound there. Um, so that's probably, <clears throat> excuse me, that's probably the play. Um, so yeah, we're going to do uh, a move, probably see a Mandalorians are stronger together. Um, and so we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll, I'll just make sure that we can capture the force spending here. So that's the move, guys. We're hovering. And I think that's Mandalorians are stronger together to give them the focus, which will give them a lot, extra, a lot more extra dice. And now we're going to see another point of, of force spent here um, for um the jump so yeah we we do have cad bane in range for his cheeky um uh no one gets in between me and my job um so basically it's all but guaranteed um that these mandalorians will be able to get in range of um you know wounding these after troopers but whether or not they can actually get the objective is the question so let's see uh, we are Looks like we, we've decided not to spend Mandalorians a Stronger Together force, uh, but we are going to spend a force for a jump. And there it is. No, so we're spending all the force. Uh, oh, sorry, it's two force for the jump. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we were... I think we are spending everything. I think we're going um, uh, pedal to the metal here. So we've spent two force on the jump and one force on Mandalorians a Stronger Together. And we're going to wail on this ARF Trooper. Um, so we need to get to uh, three successes on one of these Mandalorians so they can jump uh, and get into range of the point. Um, so we'll see what we have here. We're loading up the dice. I think, how many dice do they roll? They could even take extra dice, uh, extra damage here if they wanted. Um, so they roll, it's going to be eight dice. And they are taking extra damage to roll three extra. So they're, uh, the first one at least is rolling um, a mighty 11 dice, trying to maximize its chances. And not a fantastic roll, um, but uh, it will be enough uh, because of the expertise here. I think one... Yeah, so they get a crit. So they've basically got five successes. So it is going to be... Um, three successes total uh, because of the two blocks and that is going to be enough for the jump um, yeah so there we go we can see it happening here and that should put them in range of the objective and now it's just down to this Mandalorian plus the power of Cad Bane um, to wound the ARF troopers and we need four more damage so basically the Mandalorian just needs to get two damage in or one success I believe um, to, to allow Cad Bane to finish them off. So we'll see what we get. I don't think you need to take any extra damage. Yeah, so just rolling the, the native eight um, and we'll see. Yeah, it's a good roll. It's a really good roll. So it's uh, three crits, four hits into two blocks. Um, so seven down to five. So basically they get the full tree. Um, so you're probably going to be able to maybe even take control um, of this objective. Yeah, we could do that. So we could push this guy all the way out into um, no man's land. And then, you know, the Mandalorian could follow up and make sure that we could uh, take control of this objective for a potential third struggle here. Um, so we'll see what happens. We don't need to trigger Cad Bane, of course, uh, to, um, to, to, to wound the ARF troopers there. We've only got half an hour though, guys. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight indeed. We'll see. It's a it's a great final game here. Some big swings, some great plays. And we'll see what happens. So they're just going to figure out these uh, final positionings. And it looks like, yeah, Kevin is going to, of course, try to take control of this objective um, for the next struggle. So we'll see. Okay, so we're actually going to try and um, basically get on this objective. So it's probably worth noting just if you look at this, uh, the map this way, the back left objective here, so this one, is never active in struggle two. Um, so this one, there is a chance. It's not a high chance. Um, you know, it's it's more likely that the sort of center points do become active. But it might have been worth um, putting that Mandalorian on this objective just to make sure, um, because this guy isn't actually contributing to you know, to the wounds or anything similar. Um, 
where he is at the moment. So let's see. We've got Morgan pulling um, Django and the priority objective is this one up here. So it's tight guys, it's really tight. So the Django um, could potentially go after these Mandalorian Super Commandos, um, which, is, which is a good way of him getting these objectives back. Um, so, you know, Morgan is basically looking at a potential three point swing and a momentum as well. Um, so yeah, some really, really close uh, plays here. So we're going for Django. Um, we're probably gonna try and melee these Mandalorian Super Commandos uh, by the looks of what the templates that he's got out. Uh, he could go for the um, the Vader swing, and yet yeah, we are going to do it unless... No, okay. So we do want to stay out. Uh, we only need to get three successes of the Django on these Mandalorian Super Commandos. Um, keep in mind, guys, that um, they are worse in uh, in shooting. They're, a worse, they're worse against shooting attacks than they are against melee attacks, so probably worth keeping Django out of range there. And here we go. So Django is only rolling six because he doesn't have a focus. Uh, and unfortunately that's not what Morgan wanted. Uh, so there's only gonna be two crits, which is not gonna be enough to wound the Mandalorian Super Commandos. I take it back, it is, because they had five health, I'm so sorry. Um, so they had three left and Django does of course do three damage in, in two successes. So that is enough. Um, and we're probably gonna have to spend some more resources uh, from Morgan here to, uh, to get onto the point. But I think with a jump, it should be enough. Yep, looks like it. So yeah, the Vader, uh, the Vader swing off of Kevin there, unfortunately cost him that objective, but you know, 2020 hindsight, right? Um, he might not have actually been able to, uh, to, to get what he needed uh, with the jump, et cetera, um, had he not have done that. Um, so it goes into the middle. Um, it is going to be a momentum to both players. So we are in striking distance for both players to win this struggle. So let's see. It is the fail, which is of course uh, Morgan's back objective. So not what Kevin wanted to see here. Not what Kevin wanted to see here, but we will see. We're pulling, looks like Rex. Yeah, we've pulled Rex, okay. So Rex is quick, but I don't think he's quick enough. But what we're essentially gonna try and do is probably get a wound on Barris Offy um, or something similar, just to get them off the point. It doesn't have to be a wound, just basically displacing them. And of course, Barris Offy can do that. Um, we will need to put an expose onto Barris Offy. Um, we do have the force. And the reason that I say that guys is because Barris on her expertise tree, Two expertise gives her a reposition. So if she doesn't get wounded, um, you know we, we need to make sure that we prevent her from getting back on the point. So Rex is rolling, focusing and rolling eight into Barris. I, I assume that she's exposed. Yeah, one, one force has been triggered. So it's gonna be seven hits into one block. So full tree for Rex. Um, Barris does have eight health, so she won't be able to be, be wounded um, because he, Rex maxes out at seven. Um, but we will get some clutch pins, pushes, uh, etc. So I think that's probably the way that we go. Yeah. So one push won't be enough, guys. So we will need to go to the bottom tree. It'll be four damage total, um, two pushes, a pin, a reposition, and two heals on Rex as well. So he's just a healing machine, isn't he? So it looks like we're getting rid of the expose and we're getting rid of one damage. We're pushing um, Barris twice. And I wonder if we do take the center as well. Um, you know, the Magna Guard are in, um, uh, in reserve, um, but they could potentially um, wake up, wound Rex, um, and then take the objective. Whereas if Rex moves off this, off this point that he is now, um, it sort of makes the, the Magna Guard activation feel a little bit bad, um, but it doesn't look like Kevin has decided to follow up on any of these triggers. Um, so we will probably just leave Rex up there, which will give him a, a point. Oh, it's close. Look at that, that was very close. So it will give, um... geez, look at that, that's laser. Yeah, it looks, it looks out, just there's some pixels in between. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, that, was, that was close. So two points for uh, Kevin there. Uh, and now of course we've got uh, Morgan's turn up here. So 
One, two, three, four, five. Looks like we're five points away. Um, so it's unlikely that that Morgan will be able to win in this struggle, um, but you know it is uh, a potential. I think they're probably debating whether or not that's in. Unfortunately, the mod that we've got on here doesn't um, play. Um, it doesn't highlight objectives when they're in or out. But I would say I don't know what you guys think, but it there yeah. I think it's out. There's a, there's some there's some pixels and some light in between. So I think I think Kevin did get that one, um, but <laughs> it's close. Could have been a few angles where uh, you know Morgan decided to, uh, sorry, where Kevin decided to push him a little bit um, in a bit of a different angle. So we'll see. We will see. So what's the priority? It is the fail, so it stays on Morgan's home. So that's it, the game wants Morgan to to take the struggle, it seems, uh, and we'll see what we pull first. We've got da the big Darth Vader, so he can uh, definitely do some stuff. Where is Darth Vader? He's down here. There he is. Yeah, Darth Vader is in a position to potentially go after Cad, but he probably just wants objectives, doesn't he? Um, he probably just wants objectives. So let's have a look. So Darth Vader is down here, guys, just FYI. He is on the wrong side of the map. Uh, well, that's, that's you can't say that he's on the wrong side of the map. He's on the side of the map that he ended up on in Struggle 1. Um, and we shall see. So he could do the same thing where um, it, that Barris did by using the ingress point and then using Vader's Fury to get a second advance. Um, but I'm not sure uh, where he could get. Maybe he just goes after Cad Bane. Um, to put a little bit of momentum on, seed this struggle uh, to Kevin and then tries to go for a struggle three victory. What would you guys do? Would you try and contribute? You probably don't want to leave this side too bare um, considering there is a chance that these objectives light up uh, in struggle number three uh, with, of course, the, the exception of this one. This one is never active in struggle number three. Back left. If you guys are looking to improve some of your pre-planning positioning, um, always remember that the back left is never active in the final struggle. Um, okay, so we've got Vader using the ingress point here, um, and we're probably gonna try and position him out of Rex and out of the Arf Trooper range. Um, so I wonder if we're just gonna have a crack at Cad Bane with maybe a thrown lightsaber, or we are gonna try and contribute to this fight over here as well, uh, we'll see. So Morgan's just thinking about um, what uh, what cards he has left in the pool. Um, so he's taken three damage from the strain and we're just gonna decide what to do here. Unfortunately, Vader is body blocked by this Arf Trooper, um, but what we could do is of course throw our lightsaber at the other Darth Vader um, and hopefully um, Darth, you know, basically, it's, it's tricky. Uh, it's tricky because Darth Vader has a thrown lightsaber ability. Um, so I know that Kevin's Darth Vader is very wounded. He's only one health away, but that would trigger Darth Lord, the, the Sith Lord strikes back. So there's a few um, things we could do here. Uh, all right, so who are we throwing our lightsaber at? We got, looks like into um, Django. No, it's probably Cad Bane. Yeah, it's Cad Bane, okay. So we've got um, five successes going in uh, into, looks like we only blocked two for Cad Bane, three. So we've got a couple of uh, pushes maybe um, on the tree and a couple of damage. Uh, looks like we've got four damage total um, and no conditions because Darth Vader doesn't really do that. Um, we've uh, got two points scored. Um, so Darth Vader is just sort of taking a central position um, and uh, we have pulled Cad Bane uh, in return. So the priority objective is still this one over here. Um, so essentially Cad Bane is going to need to take it and also get a wound here as well uh, on someone. So who's wounded on Morgan's side that we could have Cad Bane potentially have a crack at? Let's have a look. Um, so we could have a crack at Barris. She's she's definitely uh, achievable there, uh, and that's pretty much the only one. Uh, Django, it's very unlikely that you're going to have a, a big crack at Django. I think um, so. I'd probably try and put the wounds on Barris Offy um, uh, from range, uh, and then you know get on this point um, and um, and seal seal the deal there um, for this struggle. 
but he might actually not be able to make it. So that was a move. He does have a rocket boots. Yeah, so this is what we're doing. We're gonna measure for the rocket boots, um, probably try and get... The only problem is Django is of course, um, Django is of course uh, in the way here um, because now Cad Bane is engaged with Django. So he's not actually gonna be able to have a sneaky shot at Barris, but we can trigger, um, how about you step aside? So he can basically make Django dash away from the objective um, if he s decides not to. No, okay, so what we're actually doing is just Cad Bane's gonna have a melee hit into um, Django uh, and we have taken two extra damage to um, roll some extra dice. Not the dice that we're looking for though, I don't think. It hasn't been a fantastic roll for Kevin. Um, so it is going to be uh, four blocks. So I think in melee, it's only gonna be three crits going through, which is definitely not gonna be the uh, amount of damage that you need. Um, so you've still done six and a disarm, um, but you're not gonna be able to get Django off the point. Um, and I'm not entirely sure, what do we get? I'm not entirely sure that um, we've had the, the force to trigger for, um, how about you step aside? Yeah, we had to spend the jump. So no, no triggers there, unfortunately. Um, Morgan has rolled up um, this as the priority objective and we're just about to see what he pulls. So we need to get four points and a momentum to get the win. Um, so we'll see what happens. We could pull the, yeah, I mean, we, this is a good time to pull the Magna Guard. Uh, we could get the wound on uh, Rex and we could even potentially get the wound on um, on uh, Darth Vader here because Barris, Barris is out, but uh, we could just try and, you know, have a crack. We'll see what we do. So this is this is it. Uh, Magna Guard going for Captain Rex, probably taking extra damage um, because they're about to get removed anyway. Um, so what do we have? We have a pretty good roll. Um, so it's going to be four hits. Uh, so it's only one success going through. So that's not actually that fantastic. And I don't think Rex is in a position to get pushed off of this building either, um, just because of where he is. So that's uh, that's no dice for the Magna Guard. Ooh, it's close, but I think no cigar. Yeah, so unfortunately not the role that we needed for those Magna Guard, a good protection from Rex. Um, he, oh, he did get wounded. I'm so sorry, guys. Um, maybe he was still exposed. Maybe he was still exposed. Mm, not sure. Okay, look, uh, maybe he was very close to getting wounded and we missed something, sorry. Um, but we did get the wound. That will be a momentum for Morgan. Uh, and now we need to score a few extra points um, to get this one here. So do the Magna Guard have a pin on their combat tree? Let's have a quick look. They do not. So there is a chance that, um, you know, we get the Sith Lord strikes back here, but we haven't had a, um, a movement action spent yet. Uh, so there's a chance that we just sort of walk back onto the point after attacking Darth Vader. Um, it's almost certainly going to be a wounded Darth Vader as well, um, because we've got, it is three expertise, four expertise. So it's a lot of crits. And remember guys that Darth Vader only needed one damage to go down. Um, so that is, yeah, that is basically going to be enough to win the game. And what, a quick and brutal game that was, guys. That was absolutely savage. So I'll just update the overlay here. Um, wow, fantastic game, absolutely fantastic. So um, Morgan, congratulations. Uh, you have um, um, ooh, you have won the first Shatterpoint League. Uh, I'm sure that that is a, a great experience. And Kevin, thanks so much again for playing. Um, you know that was awesome to see Cad Bane make it all the way to the finals. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to check if the guys would like to have a little post-match interview. Um, and um, yeah, we'll do a little bit of advertisement for the, um, for, the, for the next season because I know that that is in the works. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Um, let me just see if the guys are good for a post-match interview. Be back in about 30 seconds.
rest. Yep. But uh, okay. no, I'm really looking forward to it. It was a. Uh... Oh, are you? I, I see you're in our chat here. Hey. Oh, yeah. Good. Sorry, I just I just got the uh, the audio working. Hey guys, that was an absolutely awesome game. Thanks so much for letting us stream. And uh, yeah, congratulations, Morgan, for the victory there. That was uh, some really great plays. I'm clapping um, for you. I don't know if you can hear it, but congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah look it was it was amazing to see um some some really um i guess uh unusual primaries in the in the in the final there we hadn't seen cad bane on stream and uh, i think it's been a long time since we've seen dooku on stream as well um so kevin how did you feel going into the matchup uh, against uh, morgan here i mean you guys both knew exactly what each other were going to play um what was your sort of what was your what was your thinking what was your tactics going in well, I was just happy I wasn't having to play Talzin because I've had to play her so much in recent weeks. But um, I don't know, just thinking about it, I wanted to try to control the supports, get some damage onto there where I could, so I'm not giving Dooku a bunch of triggers. But uh, man, Morgan had some really sick plays with some of those uh, some of those responses, like that Dooku play there in the middle, getting Vader back off the point that I thought I had for sure. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, we've got a, uh, a question from Wraith in the chat uh, for Morgan. Which Dooku ended up rocking up? Was he the boss from Episode 2 Clone Wars or was he the weak <laughs> Dooku from Revenge of the Sith? I mean, he he literally did one five-dice attack, which was clutch, which was. Um, Kevin had just described. But, I mean, I don't know, man. Dooku is not an impactful primary. He's just reactive to your mm. opponents, allowing him to trigger, so... I was lucky to get, you know, Kevin did the right thing, leaving him on a one, so it wound me, and he got just the hit through to shove off. So it all just—it was a bit lucky, but I don't know which Dooku showed up, but the—he the, got the job done. It wasn't—it wasn't pretty, but he got the job done. Yeah. <laughs> what I think Perfect. I love about this game too was uh, I think this game really belonged to our supports and our uh, secondaries. Our primaries really did very little. Mm. Mm. Both our Vaders were mostly. Oh, my Vader was first activation was great. Um, mm. But then after that, both the Vaders were kind of a bit meh, weren't they? They yeah. killed one, wounded one character each. Cad was struggling to get some damage through on some people. Uh, Dooku did his one thing, but yeah, I think this was a lot of a lot of the supports and the secondaries carrying their weight, which is awesome to see. And that's one of the things I love about this game is it's not just your primaries can do great things, but I mean the game kind of belongs to the supports. Mm. It's, it's In a lot of ways, yeah. It, it's a good comment, Kevin, because I, I don't know what you've found, but I've found in the games uh, who who the star of the show is for the or star of the game largely depends on where the objectives are. And then if your primaries aren't near it, then they're sort of doing nothing. And you, as, as this game saw, as you said, the supports and the and the secondaries are, are the main attractions because they're in the fight. Absolutely. I think mm. it, was, uh, it was Arfs and Magnus all day for this game. Yeah, mm. definitely. And that's a good question as well for, for you, Kevin. Do you find yourself often shatterpointing um, your supports? I mean, um, you had a really, really good play with the ARFs activating off a shatter point and then triggering Rex off the back of them with uh, I'm Always First Kid. I love plays like that. Do you find yourself um, sort of in that mindset of play a lot or is it just sort of very situationally dependent? I think more recently I do. It's definitely situational. I am probably like most players, and I want to give it to the big flashy boys who can run in. It's like I, a double activation from Vader is always preferred. I'd love to just go hit things with him. Um, but sometimes that's not going to win you the struggle or do the things you need it to do. So I found, yeah, Shatterpoint the supports, and they can do cool things if you've got synergies built in with them. Like I will swear up and down, I think Rex is my favorite slash the best secondary, and I really enjoy him. Uh, especially in you know unison with uh, any kind of clone supports doesn't mm. have to be just arfs there's just a lot of really good synergy there so i don't know yeah I, I, to answer your question i think shatter pointing supports is something that should happen more often and in the right moment it can really work out for you mm, absolutely absolutely well look guys it, i mean it, is there anyone uh, anything that you want to state or any character that you want to give thanks to or give a heads up as to what you're playing next um morgan why don't you take that first Oh, uh, I'm, I'm actually, I really liked Kevin's uh, Cad Bane um, team there with Vader. So I'm, I'm keen to give that a bit of a go. I haven't really had much of a chance to play him. Um, that aside, I'm really looking forward to obviously the new Empire stuff, which I think a lot of Empire and Star Wars fans are. The new Sergeant Stormtrooper looks awesome. I'd love to see his combat tree. 
and obviously we've got a new Vader to play with. But oh, I'm just happy to not to be list locked as we have been for the last four weeks to, to go and play other <laughs> yep. things. Which yes. it's a long time to be list locked. Long time for sure, for sure. Okay, well, look, uh, thanks so much again, guys, uh, for 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 letting me stream. Uh, congratulations to both players, of course, for making it this far in the league. Uh, and, of course, congratulations to Morgan for taking out the very first um, Shatterpoint online league. So much congratulations. Um, I will drop some resources for our audience in the description of probably the YouTube video that we do um, to advertise the next season's league. Um, I've heard murmurings that it's going to be announced next week on the 29th of October. Um, so yeah do check that out guys um, thanks once again for letting me stream uh, to the pair of you uh, and we can't wait to bring you more content um, for I guess season 2 of the Shadowpoint League um, so yeah great guys and thanks so much thank you thanks Kevin thanks Tom